movie, big time. I thought you and Tom Weiner were brilliant. Really, 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 really. uh, he played the puppet master. I'm the puppet master, Mary. <laughs> How did you get this job? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I was huge when I when I was a big fan of that uh, of the movie uh, of the movie originally. So when the opportunity you know was hinted at that oh they're making a series and then oh we might get it. The talk was saying that and I directed Cowboy Bebop for him and Wolf's Rang, and so I was crossing my fingers and all. And I didn't even have to audition, so that was nice. That's awesome. Uh, that's awesome for you because I remember uh, we, we did the movie and I never knew about it. I'd never seen anything about it. And we just went in and she had my edition and I got the front and I thought this this is really cool. I really like the whole feel of it. I like the ambiance and I like the you know the whole the whole look of the movie and everything. And then they got the series. They called me up and said we're doing the series and I thought, oh great, I got the part of Bato. They said, uh, you have to audition. I said, oh, I did the movie <laughs> No you have to audition. Said, oh, okay. <laughs> like I said, I was thinking that. You know, I have to go on. Said I'd love to. Yeah, of course I'd be happy to. It'd be my honor. <laughs> <laughs> I love auditioning for my own role. Yeah. So anyway, there were there was like 200 guys that had auditioned against, and thankfully I got the part against. So very because you happy. sounded just like that other guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. guys. Uh, no, this is a true story. Oh yes. This is a true story. This came out in the breakdown one time. They were looking for a Richard Eckhart sound like. I swear to God. <laughs> My agent submits me for it, and I don't get cast. <laughs> so I, I, wanna, I wanna know who they get cast in that part. I wanna know who sounds more like Richard F. Carr than me. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like the five levels of show business. Yes. Who's Richard F. Carr? What is the other one? I just done the first one. Who's Richard F. Carr? Get me Richard F. Carr. Richard F. Carr. We want Richard F. Carr to tie it. And then the last one is, whatever happened to Richard Epcot? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He's still yeah. auditioning for the new Bateau show. <laughs> They're doing a puppet show. Yeah, auditioning. Yeah, it's a musical. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more questions? Over here. Yes. Sorry, we'll get to you, sorry. Um, I know you've done other things besides Ghost in the Shell. No, that's all you've done. So just because, you know, anime has a lot, uh, and just animation in general, when roles for women are all set up in the you know, and it's just uh, high voices. I don't have that voice. So to actually get a role like, uh, where I could use uh, my own, I've had a deep voice. Yeah, yeah, so and Halva, and, and yeah, I did this. She was a really strong, uh, a really strong kick-ass character. So I... I just loved her. I, I really, really loved her. I thought she was so interesting because how much emotion do you play? How much do you hide? The, the whole techno, you know, the, the technological aspect of that show was yeah. just insane. I would just come and say, I have no idea what any of this means, so I'm just gonna play it in tension clearly. So it was a really good acting exercise in that respect because I had to sound, we both did, had to sound like we knew what we were talking about and half the time I was like, I don't know <laughs> what I really like about the show is that it's not just a shoot 'em up. It's got all of these psychological levels to it and layers to it, and, and it talks about the morality of the use of technology. And, uh, and the technology basically is is you know growing exponentially. It's growing faster than, than we are actually as a, as a race, and, uh, and uh, it's kind of frightening because uh, we are going to have to deal with some of those questions that they deal with in the show at some future point and it's, it seems like the future is coming sooner than we think. Yeah, they're cloning a woolly will, man. You know. I do not know that. Yeah, she wants you to know how to do all this stuff. So the fact that we can do all this stuff is the moral question. Should we? Yeah. yeah. Just, well, I think everyone should have a woolly man. I want a woolly man. But not even them. The miniature ones are really like bonsai woolly man. That's it. Yes, you in the hat. <laughs> Any fun Fushigi Yugi stories? Yeah. Any what? Any fun Fushigi Yugi stories? Oh. I didn't know I was a man. <laughs> <laughs> was I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> so I watched it in a game and I went, whoa. So that was fun. Yeah.
the Japanese like to put those characters in every series, don't they? Mm -hmm. It's like, what's up with that? Yeah. I just played a monkey, big breasted monkey man slash woman in bleach. <laughs> Zabi Maru or something, and I was like, it's played by a man in Japan, guys. They're like, yeah, you're burnt. <laughs> 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 Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ghostbusters. Um, you usually play like a lot of serious, you know, very, very stoic characters. Uh, how did you feel playing? Uh, I can't remember her name in Van Dredd. It was more of a comedy-based series. I love the comedy. I, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. I do. Uh, Bebop. I played this character, Twinkle Maria Murdoch, and she was just sort of crazy, the old job big and over the top and <laughs> silly and I'm, I'm doing a very silly wow. role in the new season of Stitch. And I love comedy because you know I don't get to do it that often, right? I direct a lot of comedy but I don't get to uh, to play it because not a lot of comedic female roles sound like large breasted monkey men. <laughs> <laughs> well do they <laughs> I ask you. Some of my favorite monkey men are large breasted ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure what that means. Yes, you know, the uniform of Melba Squid. Yes, I just want to ask, what are your favorite episodes of Ghost of the Shell? Mine or both of them? What's your favorite episode? Jungle Cruise. Yes. Yeah, yes. It's so, so disturbing. Very disturbing. So, and it starred one of our great friends who's no longer with us, uh, Bob Pappenbrook. Oh. Uh, unbelievable actor. What a great guy. Yeah, he was. Yeah, so I love that one because it was really, really, really disturbing. It's like I had a dream like that. So it's Jack the Ripper kind of thing. Yeah, you yeah. had to watch it. Your <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not good. And then in the dream, I'm like, roll credits, roll credits! <laughs> <laughs> and they did, they rolled the credits, and I still have to watch the side. Ugh, that's horrible. Mine is a terrible thing to use. <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Yes! Other than your own character, who was your favorite character in the Ghost of the Shell? And also in regards to the technology, did you ever ask anyone else to explain what you didn't understand to you? And did that just make it worse or better? Kind of made it worse. Uh, I tried to explain the technology and everything. I understood it on a base level, but not the depth of it. So at that point, we got a time crunch to get the episodes done. So I'm just going to play that intention as clearly as possible and try and make it sound like I've been saying this stuff You're forever. Old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What was your dog in Innocence? I love uh, the dog in Innocence. What was the dog? That's actually his dog. I know, it's Bonzo's dog. No, but it's the director's dog. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's actually his dog. I love the dog. And actually, the dog is, oh, there's certain players. The dog is the most human thing in the movie. I mean, the people are becoming more like machines. And the machines are becoming more like people. Yeah. The most human thing in the movie is the dog. Which is kind of the dog. Aramaki. Aramaki. Yes. Bato, you with the major, go investigate. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to say the word. It's the, the fun thing about doing anime, too, is that sometimes you have to say Japanese names or words, oh, and they're not easy to say. No. Tsujisaki, for instance. Apparently, Bill Knight said Tsujisaki three million times because he couldn't get it That's right. Hard. It's really hard, you know, and then also have it sound like you've been saying it forever. It's just totally natural. Well, you go get Tsujisaki and blah, 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 it'll be fine. Tsujibaki, Bushibaki. <laughs> it's really tough. Yeah. It, you know, when we were doing Lupin the Third, we were, we were casting, and we had some Japanese clients. And Japan, Japanese is, is just a very, to me, is a very subtle language because you can just do like the little slightest inflection or, or change a, a little something, and it changed the whole meaning of the word. So we had these Japanese clients in there, and we, you know, they kept saying to me, they said, you know, we auditioned the Lupin guy, and they would say, no, make it bigger, 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 and he would like go over the top with it and be huge, and they go, no, no, bigger, like this, and they would play the Japanese, and the Japanese to be sounded like, it was like so flat, I mean, it was like, no, and then and then I, I go, okay, you want to do like that, and then we'd have him do it like really flat in English like that, so it sounded kind of like that, and he goes, no, no, bigger, bigger, and he would do it bigger, and then he'd go, no, 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 like this, and they played again, and it was like, I, it was the, if they were on the 